Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to another edition of My Guest List Pod. I'm your host, Darren, and this is the show where the guests on my list get to have some fun with their favorite list countdowns, and we get to know them and their work a little better. And today's show is, in fact, the finale to season two. It's been another long season that has had its interruptions in me getting shows out, but unlike the first season, these generally did not involve me accidentally maiming myself. So I guess that's a plus. If you're new to the show and you're not quite sure what I'm referring to, just take a listen through the first season and you'll get the drift. Now, I will be coming back with a third season. No, God! No, God, please, no! No! Sorry, Michael, but I have already started recording episodes for that season and I'm hoping to make it the best so far. To date, uh, I have launched my feature-packed website with PodPage, affiliate links in the show notes, which makes it easier than ever to listen to the latest episodes, register as a guest, or contact and support the show all in one place. I have already had two new guests register through the website, which was a simple and efficient process. I might actually make my first blog post about my experience with PodPage and creating my website. We'll see. As all of my interviews have been remote so far, and probably will be in the future, I've also shelled out for Riverside to enhance the remote recording quality. Riverside will also allow me to possibly play with some live streaming, but that's not something I'm concentrating on as a priority at the moment. And who knows, I might even start to do some videos to go along with the audio show on YouTube, another benefit of Riverside's features. Affiliate links also in the show notes. Anyway, I'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the next season. To today's show, and I couldn't think of two better people to have on as guests to round out my second season of podcasting. James and Tegan from the Court Case Podcast are two of the nicest individuals that I have spoken to so far, and a great example of the spirit of indie podcasters. I met these two in an Instagram indie podcasters group where they are very active and also very supportive of other creators. I listened to a a few of their shows and I knew straight away that I wanted to chat with them and highlight their entertaining and ever-evolving podcast. Now, James and Tegan chose to count down a list on the same topic that my previous guest had counted down two episodes ago, namely movies that left a lasting impact or changed your view of the world, which I initially thought might be a bit repetitive for anyone regularly who listens to the show. However, I think what it did illustrate was the fact that as everyone's journey through life is unique, so are the influences that help shape our outlook on life. Like Daniel Frankham, James and Tegan came up with a poignant list of movies and similarly interesting and meaningful explanations as to why these movies had such an impact on their lives. So sit back, relax, and don your finest lawyer's wig or join the jury as we put James and Sweet Tea into the witness box and enjoy some court case podcast cross-examination. Hi there, I'm Matthew McConaughey. Some of you might know me from my work as an actor. Other people might know me for being one of the most quotable actors of all time. But when I'm not making movies or making something that gets turned into a meme, I love to listen to the Court Case Podcast. All right, all right, all right. So, James Court and Sweet Tea, welcome to my guest list pod. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for having yeah, us. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Not a problem. What time is it over there for you guys? It is... 2.03 2 yeah, in, in the afternoon. Nice. Okay, very good. It's uh, it's about 11 o'clock here at night, but it's great because oh, it, wow. yeah, everyone's going to bed and uh, <laughs> all the uh, birds outside are also fairly quiet, so you won't get any uh, menagerie uh, noises. Uh, coming in through the the mic, so <laughs> you've stayed up late for us. That's nice. Ah, uh, that's all right. Pleasure. So, guys, <laughs> tell me about yourselves. I, I listen to your podcast, obviously, but uh, tell the world about uh, James Court and Sweet Tea. 
<laughs> so I'll uh, I'll start with me. So my name is James Court, and yeah, as we said, we're both from the UK. I started out in radio. I worked for a fairly big radio station in the UK called Capital FM, and I worked there for a little time. But uh, then the radio station closed down, and the COVID lockdown happened, and so I sort of was stuck at home and trying to think of where to how to hone my audio. Uh, creativity so I created my own podcast called the court case podcast which has now been going for about a year and a half and sweet tea is my co-host and so I do that now and I've managed to get full-time work off of that as well so I now do court case and I also produce another podcast for some other people called the search for the soulful leader and um, so that's my day job now I do both both podcasts all day every day so that's it. You don't actually have a another job. That's pretty much all you do now. No, no. I, I just do podcasting now. How lucky are you. Yeah. That's fantastic. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I count my blessings every day. But very good. And, and Sweet Tea, you have your ideal job as far as I uh, can ascertain yeah. from the podcast. Yeah, yeah, so I've just got my dream job of cabin crew. Um, so I'm just starting out that. So at the moment, the podcast is a little bit on a break. I was yeah. like, you know, step into that new lifestyle. Mm. But um, yeah, for everyone on the podcast, my real name isn't Sweet Tea. It is Tegan. <laughs> James calls me Sweet Tea because it's just the name that's just yeah. been going on, really. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. But we're both uh, in the process of moving into our own place as well. Uh, closer to where we both sort of work yeah. so um we're just sort of we've ended the season season three of court case and we're going to move into our new place and then around june time we're going to kick off a new season with a new recording place and things yeah it's good stuff great exciting thing do you actually um record in a uh are you looking to record in a studio or are you building a home studio or Normally, I record, we record at home at my house, well, technically my mum's house, and I've got like a podcast deck and a podcast set up, but I have to sort of set it up every time we record, and it's quite a lot of equipment, so it can mm. be a bit of a faff, but now we're moving into our own place where I can dedicate a personal oh, podcast yeah. setup that's always going to be there, so I can just be recording as much as I want, whenever I want, and put out a lot more content so i'm really excited for that yeah oh i guess that's what everyone aspires to having a dedicated area that they can just uh, jump yeah. into and get on right. with. So, yeah. yeah so oh fantastic uh where are you guys yeah. without giving me you know street address and <laughs> where are you guys uh, <laughs> located in the um, uh, uk we're in, in this, england this West Coast, it's, it? uh, yeah we're in the south of england in the uh, um sort of like america's got states england is split up into they're called counties mm. and um we're in a county called west sussex um so we're currently in a sort of a sort of seaside town and village in the south coast but we're moving into a city called brighton which a lot of people have probably heard of Beach area. it's quite a popular city in the uk yeah. um which is also by the sea and that's where sort of both of us are going to be working near yeah. there it's so. like an hour out from where we are here. So mm. okay, great. Yeah. yeah, we have a we have actually a suburb here called Brighton that's actually uh, by the sea as well. Oh wow! Ah. Yes. So, wow. so uh, yeah, oh, great. That's very good. I've I've actually interviewed a few guys from uh, uh, UK from England uh, as of late. The mm. guys from uh, we have been watching and pods like us. Obviously, uh, yeah, Marv. Yes. yeah, Marv. I love yes. Marv. Marv's a great guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So, did you said it started about a year and a half ago? The podcast, yes. Was it a product of lockdown, or was it something you it had was, always intended? 100%. Well, basically, when I was working at Capital FM, I sort of noticed how different radio shows were from podcasts, and particularly how censored a lot of radio is. Um, I've listened to a lot of American radio, which is not as as censored as it is in the UK. In the UK, there's so much you can't do and you can't say that a lot of the conversations just come off as so flavourless and just filler. Mm. And um, I, when I left Capsule FM, I was like, if I want to get into radio or something like that, I want to be able to create a show where it's not censored. I can talk about what I want. I can find unique sex or relationship type topics or news stories that it's not too, it could be controversial to talk about. And um, so I did have a student radio show when I was at uni called uh, In Your Face with James Court. And I sort of took some aspects of that 
For example, we have a relationship segment called Courting with James, and that is pulled straight from my student radio show because I used to do that there as well. And it was just, I sort of treated it as like sort of uncensored radio, my podcast really, where we just sort of find topics each episode that interest us that we think other people would like may not have heard of before and then they can go that's interesting and just pass the stories on to other people and um i just sort of worked on that throughout lockdown and we've just yeah it's gotten a bit popular there's yeah. a lot of dedicated people that like it and um yeah and i love doing it i was never meant to be a co-host either <laughs> yeah no sweet tea just came on as the, the first, first episode yes. because yes. you wanted to start it off yeah i was gonna originally have a different guest on every single episode mm. sort of like because it's called court case sort of like a new like victim or whoever in in the courtroom but then we released the first episode and we gave it to friends and family and other people for feedback and they just said that they really liked our chemistry. Yeah. And so I just kept, I kept sweet tea on and we sort of get a guest on every like third or fourth episode. Mm. And then but the majority of episodes are me and T giving our verdict on the topics together. Yeah. yeah look, yeah. I, I I've listened to probably a dozen of your episodes, including the first one. And when I heard mm. you two guys together, I thought to myself, and I I understood that Sweet Tea was not supposed to be a uh, a full time yeah. co host, but I thought, why not? You guys have a fantastic <laughs> chemistry. It's so funny though, because I look back on the first episode and I think I feel like confidence wise, I've come so far. Like I was mm. so scared for that first recording, and now it doesn't even phase me. I've got a um, co worker at my other job, and they all listen to um, the Court Case, my podcast. And she she says she says her favorite thing about the podcast is how sassy Sweet Tea gets <laughs> about oh, certain goodness. topics. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Well, your Halloween episode actually was fantastic because uh, you guys really there was a, a little bit of uh, banter there that was not the usual. Like you weren't agreeing with each other, and Sweet Tea, <laughs> tea really was angry. really yeah. <laughs> she was really putting it's so you to funny, task though, because. <laughs> That's such like, I don't know, I feel like that's such a thing between us, but like from other people from our perspective, they might actually think that we're arguing. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it's literally just banter. So I'm yeah. glad you picked up that it was banter. Yeah, exactly. No, it was good. It was funny. I really enjoyed that one. It was good. So <laughs> yeah. So is there a style of podcast or episode that you do that you prefer? Like you've done, I really enjoyed also the Azaria Chamberlain uh, court case one that you went over. Yeah. That, that was really good. And that actually, you actually came up with some stuff that I didn't know about that case, and you, which which was great. So I, I learned some stuff on there. Is this, there a type of episode that you prefer to do or that you like doing more than others? Yeah, one that uh, I think my favorite ones that I like to do, which I'm hoping that moving into this new place where I've got more space and time I can do more of is ones like the the Azaria Chamberlain one the um Dingo ate my baby case mm. ones where I've researched really really thoroughly you had pages yeah you? but also that sweet tea knows nothing mm. about okay because I like bringing these things having all this info and getting tea's genuine reaction when yeah. she doesn't know anything about it I think that's where it gets entertaining because tea's then becoming the voice of the audience in a way okay and uh, the, i think those are my favorite because we've we've done a couple of those the other one that comes to mind is the alcatraz episode this we did one on the famous uh, escape from alcatraz yep. and i really thoroughly researched that as well yeah and um i i yeah i do re i think those are some of our best those ones and then ones like the halloween episode where we're sort of a bit looser. We've got, we've got basically for those ones, like the Halloween episode, I have more topics than would fit in an episode. Yep. And it's just really sort of loose. And I will just throw like topics at T and then we'll just have arguments <laughs> and sort of uh, uh, <laughs> debates about them. And I, I think those sort of, and I think having the option to do different sort of types of episodes, I think keeps it fresh as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, I think those are my two sort of favorites. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree there because when I go, th when I pick some episodes to go through, I always start with the first episode and then usually maybe the third and then the sixth and then on from there. But yeah. Yeah. I actually decided to look for different types of episodes that you were doing as well, just to see what your format was like with the different episodes. And, and, and like you said, yeah. that keeps it fresh and I, it was really enjoyable. So yeah, that was kudos. It was, it was great. It was fantastic. So uh, uh, keep doing that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. You will. <laughs> Very good. All right. 
So I do get uh, my guests on to count down a list to help us uh, yes. further get to know their personality. So do you want mm-hmm. to tell everyone what uh, topic you've chosen to count down this week? Yes, we chose, we thought was an interesting one. It was um, 10 movies that have left a lasting impact on your life or changed your view. Uh, it's a, a great topic. And I think there's one other guest that's actually chosen that topic too. And really? uh, yeah, so which it, which is good though, because I, I like to see what movies have had, a, different movies have had an impact on different individuals and for uh, you know, yeah. obviously different reasons too. So, yeah. all right, well, look, why don't we get, hop straight into it? Why don't we go with your number 10? Yeah, well, I think we'll preface this uh, list well, not by in saying- order. That okay, it's not fine. in any particular order, but I, I personally I would probably put this one as number ten. Yeah, no, I agree. Higher up the list for you, maybe. Sweet Tea does not watch as many movies as He's I do. He's a film nerd. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fair I'm, enough. I'm a big film buff. <laughs> I took film and TV at uni. Um, clearly, I've not used the degree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. Lo- I I love films, but this one, number ten, was definitely a pick by you yeah i mentioned it didn't um, i it's called me before you do you want to explain what the film is yeah i don't know if you've seen it it's who's i don't know i'm not very good with um actors or anything like that so if you can jump in at any point amelia clark from game of thrones yes yeah so she's she's one of the main characters and she's looking after a a gentleman who's in a wheelchair and he's really ill and he's like close to dying and they end up falling in love and she like breaks the rules of being a carer by taking him on his last holiday. And it's just mm. really romantic and it's really, really lovely. Yeah. And I think the reason that that film sort of left an impact on me is because I've never really seen a movie that's covered um, assisted suicide before. Mm. And the end, and I, I mean, obviously that's a plot point in the film. So I suppose it's not, it's one of the Spoiler. main plot points. I suppose it's not, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true. like a main yeah, yeah, plot yeah. It's point. What happens. But he's a guy that he's, he plans to end his life yeah, at some and point. Yeah, and he begs for help. Um, by, I think you go to certain countries, there's countries like I think maybe Sweden or Norway that do it legally. It's legally. Yeah, and, it's legal. Yeah. yeah. So his, his family have helped sort that out for him and then he meets this woman and then that she sort of helps him have yeah. a really nice, like last time before. They have a lovely relationship that. for like a month before it happens. Mm. And, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. It, and it just, the, I think the impact was just seeing someone having the the balls to you know, end their life on their terms mm. and start. And it's just, it has impacted me uh, greatly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a pretty, I guess a pretty sad movie and you would leave a very emotional movie. I, I dare say my wife would love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zappy stuff. Yeah, exactly. But no, that's it's good. Okay. Very good. Yeah. All right. Uh, number nine. Number nine is one that's a bit more personal to me this time. Yeah. It's Onward, which is a Pixar film that came out. It literally came out, I think, a month before the lockdowns happened in England because it was the last Pixar movie they released in cinemas before yes. they started releasing more on Disney+. Plus. And um, the plot of the film is these two boys, these two brothers, um, they live in like a fantasy world. They're like elves. And they find a staff that their dead father gives to them as a birthday present where it has a spell on it where they can bring their dad back for a day and spend time oh, with their dad. Okay. And it's about them trying to make this spell work. And um, me and my brother lost our father when we were quite young. Um, I was about 19, 18. And so seeing that film and just um, that plot that really was so personal for is it was literally like Pixar had written this film exactly for me and my brother. Because okay. I'm not and even joking. The two characters look identical <laughs> to James and his brother. It oh, was no. freaky. Oh, it was weird. Jeez. Yeah. So that one made me cry a lot because okay. it was so personal to me. Mm. But it's just, yeah. It was it, beautiful though, wasn't it? It is a really beautiful film. Yeah, it was film. nice. Mm. Uh, look, this is your list, but, and that's, uh, you know, that obviously that movie had a great impact. And uh, this, I had a, a similar sort of uh, experience with uh, AI, with uh, the oh, yeah. end of that movie where, is it Haley Joel Osmond? I think he's mm. the, the little robot uh, boy. And yeah. he gets to spend the aliens give him one day with his mother, 
Uh, and mm. that that was one movie for me for similar sort of reason that uh, yeah. it, it left a, a lasting impact. And I could see how that would be you know, very uh, uh, impactful for you in terms of that movie. So I'm definitely going to watch it. It's got a mad cast. Tom Holland, Chris Pratt, uh, Julia yes. Louis-Dreyfus. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. And, and they, they give really good um, voice performances. Julia Louis-Dreyfus as the mum is great because okay. obviously she's from Seinfeld yeah. and I, I love Seinfeld, but um, it's one of my favorite Pixar's. I think it's in like my top three It is really good. I had never heard of it. Uh, and <laughs> I don't get to watch as many movies as I used to, yeah. but I usually with the animated stuff, cause I've, I've got my boys and things like that. We're usually onto all that sort of stuff. And yeah, I, I had actually, uh, when was it? It's, uh, I think, uh, where is it? Uh, trying to see what when it came out but 2020 i think uh, uh 2020. 2020 yeah yeah oh, 2020. yeah it's 2020 yeah 2020 yeah you got it right there tegan so um <laughs> yeah fantastic um i'm definitely going to go watch this because i'll you know like yeah. it's yeah obviously a, a really good movie so uh tell us what you think after yeah, you've seen it. it yeah definitely all right i'll uh i won't tell you if i cried though <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, number seven. Uh, are we have to seven number or eight. Number eight. No, number number eight. eight. Sorry. Number eight. Yes. Um, <laughs> now this one is basically another one that's basically solely me because yeah, I haven't watched has not them. seen it. But um, I picked the Lord of the Rings. Ah. Um, <laughs> now, right, now the reason. <laughs> Yeah. Now, the reason I put Lord of the Rings is it came out when I was like, I think I was like seven or eight. Okay. And he was, they were the first sort of movies that I went and saw with my dad. Um, and, um, well, specifically, actually, we saw the last one with my dad. He hadn't watched the other two. And because we and my brother were so desperate to see it, he sat down one evening on his own and watched the first two so he could then come and, and take us um, to Return of the King. And, I've like I've watched it every year since. I've got like the extended editions. What I love about it is it's so it's this huge grand movie, but it's so British. All of almost all the actors are like English. The hobbits and stuff, they're so quintessentially like British. They have like full English breakfasts and they love tea <laughs> and they love sticking with a warm yeah. fire. Yeah. And it's like it opened the whole world to you know, cute little Britishness. And I just, I love it. I love it so much for that reason. And also the theme of the movie being, it doesn't matter how small you are and how inconsequential you might think you are, you can make massive changes. Yeah. And just that theme is just something that I've always thought about throughout the whole of my life. Just like you may seem like you're a tiny speck, but you can make so much difference. Yeah. Fantastic. And I just think it's a really powerful message. Yeah. On the surface, that movie is what it is in terms of, you know, Peter Jackson did a fantastic job of taking mm. from the book and then putting onto screen. Yeah. And it was amazing. But yeah, it's, it's things like that that you can take away when you look a little bit deeper into it. And uh, have you read the books? Yes. Yeah. Very I read good. The Hobbit every single year without fail. And I've read The Lord of the Rings, all three of them, like twice, I think. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, that I think you can really appreciate what Peter Jackson did with the movies if you've read the books, yeah. because that adaptation, you, you know, it's very rare to get something that is as good as what he did. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I read the books as a, a kid myself, and um, I loved it. I thought it was as fantastic. And yeah, it's a it's a great takeaway from the movie that yeah, it doesn't matter how small you are, you can have a a, a huge impact in the world, and that's really good. I know that Sweet Tea's never see, saw that, see them, and whenever I mention them, she sort of like snuffs her nose up at them. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to the day when we finally sit down and watch them, and her mind's going to change. She's yeah. going to eat her words. I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is, because I was like this with the Marvels, and James has shown me all the Marvels. Loved them. <laughs> yeah. Loved them. Was... I just prejudge. I don't know mm. why. I don't know why. I yeah. normally do enjoy them. We've got Doctor Strange <laughs> this evening, so we're going to love yeah. that. Oh, fantastic. One. That's great. Uh, well, look, I think, I don't know about you, Tegan, but with me, there's been some movies that have come around that are, are really hyped. And because yeah. they're hyped, I don't necessarily want to go see them straight away while everyone else is talking about it and hyped and things like that. Sometimes you get them spoiled for you because of that. But yeah. my son wanted me to watch, 
you know, a few, there's a few movies he's wanted me to watch for ages and he keeps pressing me to, and more he presses, the less I want to watch them sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, I do. Yeah. So sometimes. I, like when it's like been so long as well, I feel like it's been out for so long. I'm like, oh, it's, there's no point in me watching it now. Yeah. Like it's been and gone. Yeah. But the thing for me with Lord of the Rings as well, where I, where I think it's like sort of different from Star Wars is there's, there's obviously, there's definitely people that watch Star Wars and they just don't like it. But there's some sort of evergreenness to the Lord of the Rings where I feel like anyone could sit down and they will find some sort of enjoyment from it. And I, yeah, I can't wait for you to watch it at some point. Let's see if it happens. <laughs> yeah. You have to set aside a fair bit of time to actually watch them, obviously, because they're, they're pretty long mm-hmm. movies. And the ex- have you ever seen, <laughs> seen the extended cuts? <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, I know. <laughs> They're, uh, well, your yeah. dad loves them. Yeah, he does. My you, dad does enjoy yeah. them. Yeah, you have to yeah. devote a lot of time, but uh, mm. not just from James, but from me, I'll say they're worth it. They're, uh, you know, okay. it's, a, it's fantastic. And I would say see the see the obviously watch the Hobbit first, the, the, the that series, mm. and then obviously roll into Lord of the Rings as the books. Uh, yeah. Uh, have you yeah. read Have you read the other books like Silmarillion and things like that? I've I've bought a couple that I'm like saving until I've moved into my own place and I can just sit in my living room and re- read them. I bought the Silmarillion and I've bought, um, there was another one, I think it's called like the fall of Gondolin or something. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to try reading those. There's a couple of other ones too, that uh, came out called uh, unfinished tales. And I can't I really want to watch that one yeah, yeah. There's, there's another one too i can't remember what it is i've, I've got them downstairs i haven't had a chance to read them yet but i think they were finished by his son uh, yes they were yeah talking yeah 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 so uh um so i've got them downstairs but uh, there's so many books i've got to get around to reading that i haven't had I a chance could, to. i could speak about the lord of the rings for hours <laughs> yeah all right fair enough all right well let's instead of doing that we can do that another day we'll just have devote a whole podcast to it so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> How about we'll we come on again once I've watched it and then yeah. we'll yes, have that, a discussion? That'd be great. All right. Yeah. Why don't we move on to number seven this time? Now, this is one that we've both watched yes. and we both watched it recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, Forrest Gump is what we've chosen. A uh, classic. That yes. film never fails to make me cry. Um, Just beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. And it's it's another one about it's about underestimating people again. Like he sat on this bench. Another thing that I don't think other people don't always take away because they're so focused on forest like in that say. film is that he sat on a bench and new people come and sit down with him throughout the movie mm. and it's just something like you just you don't know what's going on in someone else's life you mm-hmm. just don't know the mm-hmm. amount of people that have sat down and just learned about his thrilling journey and the amount of effect that he's had on the history of the USA yeah. and it's just it's inc- it's incredible and Another bit is that never fails to make me cry. Most people cry when, um, obviously, spoiler, but it's been out for like 30 years. Um, <laughs> and obviously, most people cry when Jenny dies. But when he finds out that he's got a son mm. and he's asking Jenny whether his bit. son is smart or not, mm. yeah. that kills me every time. Yeah. Every time. I think I have a bit of a controversial opinion because I can't stand Jenny. No, a lot of people don't like Jenny. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, okay. Loads of people don't like Jenny. Yeah, I don't like what she did. She I just think keeps... Buggering off, off and then yeah. it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, I understand you referring <laughs> towards that. It's funny, James, you were talking about how people sit down next to him. Uh, one of the, the, the lasting images I have from that movie is when he gets through telling some of his stories and the old lady or the older lady that's sitting next to him, the, the look of awe on her face as she's <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's finishing his story. So yeah. yeah, that one little scene where she purposefully misses her bus, mm. yeah. so she can oh, sit with him for a bit longer. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Little moments like that, I love it yeah. so much. Because she could tell that he just needed to talk. It's mm. so lovely, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, fantastic classic movie. That's great. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, look, that's ten to seven. How about we yeah. get back to talking about you and your podcast just for a little sec, cool. and then we can oh, continue on. Uh, with the the list in a minute. Yeah. So I do want to ask you some more questions about your podcast, but for now I'd also like to find out what do you guys do for fun? What hobbies or what interests you have outside of podcasting and jet-setting around the world? Well, um, we we like a holiday, but we can't afford to go on many, so we don't go on many <laughs> often. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, but I mean, we love a good night out. We love a good drink. Our, um, our, our hobby together is probably mini golf. We love yeah. that. We do that everywhere we go. Um, okay. It's just like our little like 
Yeah, it's a little yeah. thing that we just do. If we see one, we go. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Good. Yeah. I never noticed how much we play. We've done it a lot. Until, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you? Yeah, it's good. No. Do you collect anything from the mini golf places that you go? Like, um. Yeah, what? I keep the scorecards. Oh, oh nice. do you? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I need to see those. I'm I- winning at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So, um. Do you follow sport at all or do you play um, sport or do you I, play anything no, else? No, I'm do? never really much of a sport buff. I really keep up with like movies and movie news <laughs> okay. and TV a lot. And I, me and, me and T love watching new series on TV together. We love a good sitcom, mm. sitting and watching those. Um, I just, yeah, I'm quite obsessed with film and TV, so I keep up with all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. So what are you watching at the moment on TV, Netflix or something like that? Um, well, we're on the final season of Better Call Saul, mm. which is airing okay. at the moment, um, yeah. which is very exciting because it's going to start overlapping with Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. which is obviously one of the best shows that was ever made. Um, <laughs> we love It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. We will just watch rerun episodes of that all of the it's time. so easy and funny mm. to watch, isn't it? And we also like diving into a good like Netflix documentary, yes. good true crime ones. There's one coming up soon about that sperm doctor that swapped out loads of people's mm. sperm for his That's own. Absolutely yeah. I don't know um, if I can spot it. Yeah, I'm, but I'm quite excited to see the seediness of that disgusting Go documentary down, yeah. soon. Yeah, I couldn't even finish the um, Jim, Jimmy Savile one. Oh, he I watched watch that. It, yeah. That was incredible and disgusting. Oh. Yeah, I watched that with my uh, my eldest boy. Had actually w- had actually watched that, and he said, "Dad, you have to watch mm. this." And he, we mm. sat down and we watched it. And uh, yeah, that that was amazing. That uh, he got away with it for so long. Um, Mad. Something that I'd be interested in asking you is: obviously, you're from Canada. No, I'm so from you Australia. Probably- Oh, you're from Australia, sorry. Yes. Uh, sorry. Oh, we That's were talking right. to someone earlier this morning yeah. that was from Vancouver. That's why. Okay. Um, you're from Australia. And so you guys probably weren't that aware of like Jimmy Savile beforehand. I, so, like, I knew who he was, but um, yeah. but I, I didn't know how, how popular he was in England mm. when he was at his his prime, obviously. And but I, I knew the name because he was he was obviously very influential at that time mm-hmm. uh, and so we mm-hmm. hear about a lot of that stuff here and but no i i, I didn't realize there was um, so much of a story behind who he was until i watched the doco mm-hmm. but that's what the documentary does well because it's two episodes in the first episode they really set up like why he was so popular and why he was such a big name and then the second episode is where it gets like really seedy um but yeah, it's just all all of all of England was just disgusted and yeah. ashamed, and it was oh, it's terrible. Yeah, and the fact that he had yeah. such close ties with such influential people, including the royal family. Yeah. So mm. yeah, really yeah, interesting. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fine. Fantastic. So I'm interested to know mm. what what has the podcast been for your what is it, what has it done for your relationship. Has it has it been something that you just rolled into nice and easy? It's something that's brought you closer together, or something that came naturally. Good question. That is a very good question. I definitely think it's brought us closer yeah, together yeah, as well. I think it's helped. Uh, well, but, we've, yeah, we've like developed like a some like a love and a hobby together, haven't we? And I, I definitely, it's definitely helped your confidence a lot in a way mm. as well, and. Um, I think I don't think the, the court case would be what it is if you weren't involved. Mm. And um, yeah, I do think it's it's definitely strengthened us in that way. And I can't imagine doing yeah. it without you now. It's taken off a lot, a lot of time as well. Like we've achieved a lot of things. Like um, you know, we've done loads of collabs with cool people. We went mm. with Audio Mango. We've collabed with people that I've spoken to people that we probably never would have spoken to before. Dream come true, we've, gradual report. Yeah, and we also mm. we've gone to a podcast event together, and we're going to more. So oh, great. yeah, I definitely think it's it's a nice nice thing that we're doing together. A hundred percent. Yeah. And look, that comes across in the show, and I think as I Aww. listen to more episodes, and um, uh, you got Tegan, you got a lot more comfortable. I think yes. the dynamic is really, really good, and it was good. <laughs> to begin, it was good to begin with, but yeah. I think it's gotten okay. better uh, over Thanks. time. Too. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. So, what does a week look like for you guys now that you're? Uh, James, you're so involved in doing podcasting as your mm. your full time job. Uh, what does a week look like for for you? 
So, well, at the moment, our weeks are sort of changing every time. But normally, I have I work nine to five. Um, with the other podcast, but the thing is, I've got a lovely boss who's really flexible, and he lets me do court case work in between those times. As long as I get like the work done for him, I can just do sort of court case in those hours yeah. as well. So most of my days are just sort of doing multi- both of those sort of things, and I can some uh, most of the time I work from home, but there's also an office in Brighton where we're moving to, and. Um, Whereas T, you're sort of waiting to do your first flight at the moment. The moment yeah. So your days are mostly filled with just doing whatever you want to do yeah, at the moment. Relaxing at the moment, the calm before the storm. Mm. In terms of recording court case, we would normally record on a Saturday or Sunday. Mm. Um, we would try to do mul- more than one episode at a time. I just get a laundry list of a huge amount of topics that I found throughout the week and we'd try and record a couple episodes, um, which we would then sort of space out. But uh, obviously, we're not doing that at the moment while we're in this transitionary period. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's sort of what a week would basically look like. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, well, I guess, you know, Tegan, you're now going to be away from home a lot more. So you're going to have to maybe come in on remote a couple of yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, good. Yeah. It's all experience, I guess. Or even bulk record, I guess. But yeah. the thing is with bulk recording is topics don't align with yeah. when they came out. Not like as that. recent. So yeah. Not as recent, yeah. I guess it's all experience if you, you start to learn how to uh, you know refine remote recording together and things like that it's just uh, another string yeah. to the bow that you can you can have as a as a couple and uh going forward with your podcast which is great yeah that's why i think when we move in together because luckily for me i only have to set aside an hour because james does all the editing work yeah. so mm, yeah. it shouldn't be too bad just for me finding the spare hour just to sit you down sit, in the chair sit, sit down in the chair in a house that we live in like it'll be <laughs> <Yeah>. fine <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what james what do you use to uh, edit so what I used to edit is I use two pro- programs, actually. One of them I discovered through work, and it's literally revolutionized editing for me. It makes it so much easier. It's this program called Descript, mm-hmm. and you basically you get the audio that you've recorded, you drag and drop it into this um, program, Descript, and it translates all of the audio into a Word document. And then you can basically delete words and delete sentences you don't like or don't want, and it will cut it off the audio just like you're editing a word document and it streamlines it and it makes it so much easier and you can see with your eyes all of the words from the podcast which helps and then after i've done that sort of little initial edit on there i will take it into an audio program called reaper okay and um, i will do all of the sort of sound design adding jingles cleaning up audio and stuff in there and then i'll put the episode out fantastic okay that's that's good yeah now i've heard of reaper and descript and Descript, I had a look at um, their studio option. So that you put the audio and it turns it into sort of like a, a studio sound. But uh, I haven't yeah. really followed through. It's a bit of a learning curve with it and I just hadn't had the time. So, okay, very good. The pros, yeah, the pros far away, the cons, with, the only con really is that you've got to pay, pay for it, but it's yeah. not too expensive. But also you can create a lot of your social media on Descript as well, oh. where you've got the transcripts, they've got this little video function and you can drag images in and basically create TikToks and stuff okay. with the audio right there. Yep. So it's, it runs, yep. learn everything. It's such a handy tool. Okay. Uh, and so what are you, are you looking at uh, maybe doing any other podcasts in the future or are you going to look more at maybe going into producing uh, more podcasts and just stay with court case. I want to stay with court case and I want to hopefully in the future toward maybe towards the end of the year, start next year, I want to try and maybe like pitch it to some sort of studios where it could get some proper money behind it. Yeah. Cause I think the name court case and court case podcast, I think it is a definitely like a brandable name. It's, it's catchy. It's got a hook. I think that it can, it's sellable. I think with Multiple enough meanings, as well. yeah, with enough marketing and money behind it, I think it could be like a. It has the potential to be something really big. Mm. Yeah. So I do want to try like pitching it to other studios. I think in the future. Yeah, that's great. Uh, look, it's a, a denser field now in terms of there's a lot of podcasts out there, and it's yeah. a it, it's it's harder than it probably was when I was just listening to podcasts to to make yourself mm-hmm. known and to stand out. So obviously you have a lot of uh, things that you want to do with your show and it's going to be a, a lot of work, I dare say, but it uh, looks like the fact that you can devote so much time to it, then 
obviously that puts you in good stead because a lot of people like myself, for example, just do this as, you know, a, a hobby as such. And yeah, you, mm. you know, I've got to pay the bills some other way. So, <laughs> so yeah. um, I'd like to do this more, more often and I'd like to be able to uh, organize more interviews and things like that. But at the moment, not the case. So I love seeing yeah. someone that can follow that dream and, Obviously, we'll keep in touch over social media and stuff, and I'll see how you uh, okay. both of you guys are uh, are uh, progressing. So, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. it's exciting. Very good. I didn't know what a podcast was until we <laughs> started one, which is quite funny. But now I see them everywhere. Yeah, lockdown just skyrocketed it. Mm. Not yeah. only people were listening to more, but people had even spare YouTubers time to make now. More. YouTubers nine times out of ten, they've all got a podcast now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, there's a couple of guys. It's kind of annoying. what kind of annoys me is you've got people like us like you and me that are at home and like we're putting a lot of effort into these and we're trying our best like our side hustle yeah but Mm. then you'll get these podcasters that they'll just be like a random celebrity that also got millions of quid and And just because they've got a a Mm. mic and money to sort of make their own studio they suddenly just got thousands and thousands of listeners yeah. and it is, it, it, no, it is frustrating that's frustrating yeah it is a little demoralizing we have the same thing here we have people who have been you know i don't i you know they've, they're not what you call celebrities but they're they're they're, they're known they've been on know, yeah. tv shows and they all of a sudden they've decided to start a sporting podcast and interview and they have access they have access that we'll well i'll never have uh, well, I don't at the moment have to, you know, personalities and sportsmen that, you know, uh, they just yeah. oh, make a phone call and there they are and they're, they're doing an interview yeah. with them. So uh, I guess it's paying your dues, but yeah, that's frustrating yeah. when they can circumvent all that. <laughs> so. it's, the yeah. same, it's the same with radio in the UK because now they've really, there's so much less radio stations in the UK. And then if you want to be a radio host, a lot of the time they just get in some celebrity to do yeah. the morning show. And so that's a radio, a, listens, a professional no. radio host is then missing out on a job because mm. they've just gotten a celebrity in for their name. It's, and it's also like, you see with movies as well. It's like, if I was an actor, I get so pissed off if Taylor Swift was now in this movie. Yeah. Like you're, you're t- go and fucking sing a song. <laughs> Like, yeah, exactly. Let's that, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I understand completely. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. Oh, look, I guess there is the work that they did to to get where they are with their own yeah. career, and they're they're just you know making the most of it. So I understand. Yeah. I'd probably do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah in the would. position, you would. if you've got, but we're not. To be so in a we're movie. annoyed. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> very, yeah. very good. Um, look, I could ask you about one thing yeah. in particular as well. So you guys love Squid Game. One of the episodes I was listening to, you, you loved Squid Game. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan at all. But you redeemed yourself by loving the boys. So uh, yeah. Well, I originally didn't like Squid Game. No, because you, you had to really it. convince me to watch the rest. I watched the first episode and I was like, because I don't like the Hunger Games either. Oh, I just no. don't like the idea of these people. I like the Hunger Games. See, I don't like the idea of these people not having a choice and then just getting put into these games and sort of like killed. Yeah. And so I didn't like the first episode and of then, the Squid Game. And then they did the second episode where they he had then, a choice. And they he had get a out. choice to come back. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I completely changed it. I was like, okay, well, they've chosen to be in yeah. there. So yeah. <laughs> they can, yeah. whatever yeah. happens, happens. <laughs> but the boys is. Oh, it's such good Yeah, TV. unbelievably good. Well, I'll show you something. This is fantastic for, for, for radio and podcast and things like that. I'm going to show you something. But uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the only podcast of uh, the only podcast, the only pop I own is. Ah, uh, Billy Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> <He wants that>. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere I've got, I've got Huey somewhere. Yeah. Oh, okay. Somewhere. Yeah. But I. I love the boys. The boys, so Billy is, Butcher is a fantastic character. It is. It's fantastic. I love Keith, uh, uh, Keith Urban as well. So uh, you know, in uh, mm. Carlo, he's in, Lord, he's in Lord of the Rings as well, isn't he? Yes, I think he's Boromir. Hey, sorry, Bo- Boromir is Sean Bean. He's oh, Hayamir, the robot. Ah, of course, soldier. of course. Yeah. Yes, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, so uh, very good. <laughs> That's right. Sean Bean died in another That's movie here as well. The, yeah, the new season's out next month. Yes, Ju- June like tenth or something. Yes. Exciting. And why does Sean Bean die in all these movies? I know. <laughs> he, d- he died in Game of Thrones, died in Lord of the Rings. Apparently he's died in something like 50 films. Yeah. Sean <laughs> Bean. Ridiculous. He just loves it. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Must be in his contact. Yeah. Yeah. Like. yeah. 
<laughs> Look, you get an extra million if you die. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> Very good. All right, guys, let's get back onto your list then. Uh, yeah. Let's come yeah. in at number six. Yeah, we've picked the Truman Show, which you've not watched. Not what, I've seen list. loads and loads of clips, and I've heard really, really good things. And we are going to watch it, but yeah. I know it's good. It's just it's remarkable, and in in many ways, it's more relevant today than it was mm-hmm. when it came out because mm. obviously film about someone who's constantly being watched and they don't know they're being watched and you know with social media and everything nowadays and and i was watching a podcast the other day where they were talking about like the ukraine war and the fact that this is one of the first wars where we're seeing footage of it in real time just from people's phones they're just uploading it straight to the internet like it's everyone is just being watched like all the it's time mad, and it? it's just it feels so much more relevant today and also yes. jim carrey gives such a beautiful heartfelt performance of this innocent man that's grown up in a world that he just doesn't he feels is normal and it's just completely not yeah and he's so he's a, a slow awakening to what's actually going on mm-hmm. it's uh yeah, it's a, it's a really it's funny. It's a feel good movie in one way, but it's also a tragic movie in another way. And then yeah. when you add the Big Brother element to it uh, as well, it uh, it's it's cruel to a certain extent as well. So a great pick, a really good movie, and like you said, uh, couldn't be more relevant than than now. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. All right, number five. Uh, number five is one that we have both seen. Both it's called seen. Hunt for the Wilder People. And um, I don't know if you've seen this one, but it's uh, Taika Waititi, who's obviously a huge sort of director and sort of star now. And um, Sam Neill, who's another New Zealander. Yes. Um, and one of my favourites. And it's about he, him and his wife adopt this little boy from the city and they live out in the country. And the wife, who was the one that sort of cared about the boy more, ends up dying. And um, so... Um, the social services try and come and take the boy back. So then the dad and the boy run off into the woods and try and escape the social services. Okay. And it's just this really lovely feel good film about like, it's, it's the whole sort of message is you know, like, um, f- uh, you know, the family you choose sort of thing. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be blood. It's like these people have such a strong bond and they want to, you know, yeah, that be his, together. his love grows for his son as the movie goes on, yeah. which is really yeah. lovely to watch. Mm, nice it's great it's bloody funny as well <laughs> yeah so strange. Ty- you wouldn't think it because yeah. of it's quite a raw film but it is funny Ta- taika watiti is so good with humor okay. so good well uh yeah. it, does he play the uh the rock guy out of one of the marvel yeah he yeah. plays korg korg in, that's in right the- yes yeah <laughs> it's very very <laughs> funny and julian dennison yeah. in this um fire fist from deadpool 2 yeah, pardon? Julian Dennison is the son in that one? Yes, 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 He's he is. Fire Fist. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. He was in the second Deadpool movie. Yeah, he, yeah. Well, he does. Oh. Sorry, you were going to say? I was just going to say, I want to see him in more. Those are the only two things I've seen him in. I want him to be in more stuff, the little boy. He's great. Well, he's actually in something else out here. He's actually in some uh, ads for razors. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, and he's actually <laughs> funny in them as well. So, um, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh. He's a funny guy. He's, uh, I, I'd never seen him before, obviously, until I saw Deadpool 2. And uh, then yeah. you suggested this movie and I saw he was on there. And I thought, yeah, that's a reason for me to go watch it. Uh, apart from Sam Neill. Yeah, Sam Neill's great as well. Yeah, I think Hunt for the Wilder People might have been his like first ever sort of like role. Okay. So it's like his breakout role, I think. And I've always loved Sam Neill ever since I was a kid. I love all his films. He did the film A Cry in the Dark, which was about, yes. you know, the Zara Chamberlain yes, case. Exactly. He's in that. Yep. And he's great in that film as well. And um, obviously Jurassic Park, he's in as well. I just love everything, everything <laughs> he's been in. He's in Thor as well. He has a really small role there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what's, he, what's he doing Thor? So in the third Thor... There's in one of the scenes. There's a group of actors that are acting out the events of the previous Thor film. Okay. And one of the actors is Matt Damon. Yeah. And another is Sam Neill. And the third one is Chris Hemsworth's brother Luke. Okay. Um, and so that yeah, they play the actors. That's but, funny. Yeah. Is that in Ragnarok? Yeah, it's in Ragnarok. Yeah. I, I've seen that, and I can't remember that scene. So I'm gonna have to go it, back and watch it. it. At the start. Okay. Yeah, go back and find it. But, um, yeah, Sam Neill plays Odin. 
the actor <laughs> okay. playing Odin. Okay, no worries. I'll go back and watch that for sure. All right, fantastic. <laughs> um, all right, uh, we're up to number four. Uh, yeah, and yeah. funnily enough, it has another. It has Sam Neill in it. <laughs> yeah, it's another <laughs> Sam Neill. It's this is my favorite film of all time. Honestly, ever. you should see his room. He's got posters of this film. Yeah, I do. Yeah. His <laughs> room. I don't know if I can move. Around. I've got all three Jurassic Park. You do films. too, all <laughs> framed and looking fantastic. I oh, know, and uh, I've got like props from the movie as well. I've got an. You said the movie. Uh, old Jurassic Park. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can, I've no, not we said it. <laughs> Mental. Um, I've got like a leaflet for the park that was used in the film oh, somewhere fantastic. Um, on, on a shelf up there. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's my all-time favorite film. It's such a good one. I love the way Spielberg just uses tension and he just you do the the dinosaurs in the film you wouldn't think it but they have less than 10 minutes of screen time okay the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park but you just feel their presence like as soon as everything goes wrong that they could just be anywhere and yeah. the use of animatronics and the and just the fact that you know it just it looks so real to this day the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park look more real today than the dinosaurs in the Jurassic World movies that yeah. are coming out at the moment yeah because they use CGI such a little and because our list I was thinking about films that have a lasting impact the way that they use CGI in Jurassic Park loads of film directors were influenced by this specific film okay. Jay after watching Jurassic Park, James Cameron decided that he could do the Avatar films in a few years. Um, after watching Jurassic Park, George Lucas said that he could have a crack at making more Star Wars movies. Yeah. The the amount of cinema that has changed because Jurassic Park came out is just it's it's mental. So much of cinema owes itself to Jurassic Park. And I just think that that's it's it's that's what I just love it. And also, if you watch the film, I could talk about this for hours. Oh but if you watch the film, the film itself is not about dinosaurs. It's about Sam Neill's character learning to be a father yes. because he gets stuck in the park with those two kids. And at the start of the film, it, they establish how much he hates children. <laughs> yes. And the whole film is about Sam Neill learning to like kids, and they've put dinosaurs around it. It's not focused on the dinosaurs, and that's what makes it. A um, beautifully told film. Yeah, and and Laura Dern uh, looking off from the side at how he's he's put into situations with the kids, and he's so uncomfortable, yeah. uh, and she's yeah. just having a giggle at it. I, I love it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's a it's a great movie. So and again, Laura Dern, one of the first, along with Sigourney Weaver in Aliens, is like one of the first strong female characters in movies. Yeah. Like she's fantastic in this movie. I'm so excited to see all three of them again in the new one that's coming out in June. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Going to be nice. Look, it's funny that you say that about the animatronics too. That was one of the things I was talking to my my uh, eldest boy the other day about uh, the oh. thing. And the thing was yeah. uh, big on, you know, not using CGI back then with the Kurt Russell movie. And then the remake, they went the other way and they actually used CGI. And I think it was, a le although it was an okay remake, it was a lesser film because of that. It is. The, uh, the thing is so creepy. The animatronics yeah. they use in the thing, oh, it makes me shiver. It's so disgusting. I've only watched it once. I'm not gonna, it just, they freak me out <laughs> so yeah. much. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great movie. That's one of our, I'm not a massive horror fan, but that's one of my, my favourite sort of horror movies is the thing. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a classic movie, so... But obviously, we're talking about your classic movies and Tegan's classic <laughs> movies, so uh, we'll stay on Jurassic Park. But yeah, no, uh, it's a great pick at number four. So it's uh, you're so you know you're such a big fan of Jurassic Park. I'm I'm uh, uh, surprised it's not number one. I w I know we initially didn't do the list in a particular order. I would have put Jurassic Park at number one, but okay. I thought I'd be more liberal with uh, Sweet Tea. Yeah, and very good. Be <laughs> as well. Great <laughs> good yeah. of you. So yeah, very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look, why don't we? This next one probably my favorite. Uh, with, yeah. yeah. Okay. Number three. Yeah, Soul. Yeah. It's a Pixar again. Mm. Okay. <laughs> well, they're more recent ones. Yeah. yeah, definitely recommend. I recommend this one to everyone because it's just so like powerful. Um, it's basically just like uh, he's um he's he Mexican? No, no, no. no he's he's African American. African American, and um, he's trying to find like his um purpose in life, and um, there's like a scene where he like dies, but he dies too early. I'm probably not explaining this very right. well. What happens is <laughs> he um. 
he, he, he dies he falls down like a drain and then basically in this um in this pixar movie souls are like real and they get assigned to people when you get like assigned a purpose to your soul and then that soul attached to person that's how you live your life and um basically he dies and then he meets the different souls as they're getting assigned to people and stuff and mm. the whole film basically is about um fight not only is it about finding your purpose in life, but it's also about coming to terms with the fact that it's okay if you don't. Okay. And that if it's, it's, there's this wonderful scene near the end that brought tears to our eyes, <laughs> which was just people finding joy in just like the little things. Like he was sat at his piano and he was looking at like a leaf moving on, on the windowsill and it and just, he was feeling the breeze and he was feeling the music and it was just something so small. And this is probably the first Pixar film that I feel is adult. It's an adult film. Mm, I, I, I don't think I could put soul down in front of small kids. No, they wouldn't they get would, it. They would get it. They would, they, they wouldn't. Okay. And a, a lot, I've seen a lot of critics say that as well. And I think it's, it's honestly, I think it's a film that every adult, especially maybe our age, that's trying to figure out what the hell they should be doing with their life. I really think they should watch it. No, yeah. Okay. Get um, the, it's so important. Get the priorities uh, straight sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Now, and it's like got the jazz music in it as well. Yeah, it? it's, it's got cool, cool music. And the animation is incredible. The mm. Pixar's animation nowadays is just... Top notch. Th- yeah, yeah, there were some shots of like a pizza and it looked like a real pizza. <laughs> it crazy. was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I'm oh, definitely going to be uh, checking that one out. And look, it it wasn't also because Graham Norton and Richard Aote are in it as well. <laughs> yeah, I've got Richard Aote yeah. in it. Yeah, I love him. He's so funny. Yeah, uh, I I first saw him. I think was he in uh, a TV series? Was it the um, the uh, IT crowd? IT crowd. Yes, exactly. And then I saw him in the Watch, and I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Watch is a funny film. He's a funny yeah, guy. A yeah, but uh, it's got a great cast: Jamie Fox, Tina Fey. Uh, Felicia Rashad, um, the thing is, Alice Braga. I feel, like, I feel like nowadays Pixar is like the most respected sort of like animation thing, yeah. and I feel like these actors they 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 want to, if Pixar approaches them they want to be in a Pixar yeah. movie. I think yeah. Yeah. so. That's how they get the cast like these. So um, yeah, but it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, hundred percent. That's one probably out of all of them. That's one of the ones that has definitely like changed my view. No, I agree. On life after. I remember we both finished that. We're just like, wow. Yeah, like, we're like speechless. Don't we? Just like yeah. that's so cool. And then yeah. we went straight downstairs and we told your mom to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. That's yeah. lovely. I guess yeah. so. It gave you more uh, more of an appreciation to stop and enjoy. Step back stop and, and yeah. not feel like because the guy at the start of this movie, every single decision he was making was in service of what he Other, thought yeah. his purpose was, okay. which was to be a jazz musician. And it's about the fact that you can stop. You can have that purpose, but you can stop. You can take your time. You can enjoy little things little and things. other yeah. people. And it's just, it's And you're not on a time world. scale. Like you mm. don't have to figure your life out at the same time as everyone else. Like this guy was a lot older than other people yeah. that were in this soul universe trying mm. to figure their thing out. So, okay. yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Yep, definitely going to put that one on the list as well. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> you got know. two Pixar's on your yeah. list. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I grew up. Uh, well, I grew up uh, the last obviously twenty years uh, with my boys. You know, we've watched a lot of Pixar. <laughs> so, yeah. But I like them too. I enjoy them. So that that's that's uh, that's a plus. So they're technically the most successful movie studio in Hollywood because yeah. they've only had one bomb. Or, which was, I think, the Good Dinosaur. Every film that they brought out has been a hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And look, single one. Monsters Inc. has been, uh, you know, a, fa- a family favorite here for for oh, until the boys got old enough to not really care about it. But mm. uh, when they were yeah. all young, uh, to to each one of them, they 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 love that movie. So, yeah, yeah. And it's just the ideas that they come up with. Like so cool. Mo- Monsters being scared of the kids. Yeah. yeah. What an inspired and great yeah, idea. And, and it's, it's inside great. out where your emotions are in your yeah. head. Like, yeah. that's so cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, is. really cool. Okay, so let's get into your number two. And speaking of uh, movies that are a staple in this house, or they were when my boys were young, I think uh, this was one of them. What's your number two? Really? Oh. Brother Bear. 
that's great because I feel like it's slept on a lot. Like it's one of those Disney films that not too many people have watched. And I think it's a travesty. I think it's got, cause you know, people always talk about how they cry at the Lion King and stuff like that. Yeah. I think in brother bear has got arguably a sadder scene, um, which is when like the, but it's been out ages. So we'll talk about the plot. Of course. But obviously, you know, <laughs> yeah, obviously, you know, it's about a, um, these, this group of Inuit sort of like, older cave people and one of them kills a bear and the gods punish him by turning him into a bear yep. and the scene where and he obviously meets the little bear cub and he goes on a journey and the scene when he finds out that the bear that he killed was the little bear cub's mum i think and he has to tell the kid that yeah. that is arguably a much sadder scene than like the lion king it's and it's just it is. It's so heart wrenching, and the way they use Phil Collins's music. I was going to say. The, I was about to say the music is amazing. The in music's that fantastic. Film. Yeah. Both films he's done, the music in this and Tarzan, are just fantastic. Mm. Um, but yeah, that film always had a lasting impact on me. I remember watching it when I was young, and I just remember not any other. I think Mum bought it just from like a supermarket, just as a film to like shut us up, sort of thing. <laughs> and um, I um I remember watching it and just being blown away by it, and no one else that I knew had watched it. And um and just also the way that the, it looks beautiful, the scenery in that film, all the backgrounds are just like painted beautiful mountains. Yeah, and um just. I think it's a really good film about like brothers and about family bonds and stuff like that. And you don't get enough of that nowadays. Like Onward is also a film about brothers as well, but you don't, you don't normally get it. A lot of films nowadays are skewing away from that sort of message. Mm -hmm. And I think like brotherly and sibling bonds and stuff is, is quite, can be quite important. A hundred percent. And that's why I get so upset when my boys decide to uh, start belting each other. So. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah. yeah we've tried to uh uh engender them with a a a, a love they should uh, they have a love for each other obviously but we've tried to get them to be as close as we can in terms of uh you know brothers and they're so close in age to my two little ones they're only 15 and a half months apart uh and wow. as yeah as young young boys they were like twins so i have a snapchat um we have lots of snapchat groups and one of the snapchat snapchat groups that i have is called twins mm. because it's just for mm. those two uh yeah. but as they've gotten older into teenage years um they've they've probably separated a little bit more in terms of their own friendship groups and uh, we're hoping that uh, my wife and I are hoping that as they get older they'll they'll come back together and be a little bit closer yeah. so yeah but sure uh, they- my um my mum has sort of had the same philosophy and now as my me and my brother are both sort of moving out now she's really like emphasizing the fact that she wants us to still meet up regularly and have some sort of relationship because she thinks it's really important and i mean me and billy do share me and my brother billy we do share a lot of interest and stuff especially in films and stuff so i I do want to try and keep that relationship going i mean he's moving to the same place we are so (laughs) yeah (laughs) perfect you know what you sit down down and watch brother bear together (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or, or Brother Bear too. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've not seen the second one. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't, I don't think no. we have either. Wow. <laughs> I know of it. I just I don't think I don't think we have. They may have, but I I don't think I have. Yeah. So very good. All right, let's take another quick break and get into some quick fire questions for you guys. Don't think Alrighty. too hard about them. Uh, just a couple of things yeah. that uh, I've come up with here to to ask you, and you, you both get a chance to answer as well. Doesn't have to be the hive mind on this one. So cool. <laughs> All right. So, what's something about uh, what's something that makes you really mad? Um, for me, it's uh, inequality. I am a real stickler for fairness. And if things aren't like black and white fair, it can really irritate me sometimes. I understand that sometimes things have to be, not everything can be exactly equal. But when you're in a situation like a job and like one coworker is being treated better than another one and stuff like that, I just, that stuff really just makes me angry. Yeah, Yeah, favoritism. Yeah, Yeah, favoritism, yeah. Tegan? I think for me, mine would be communication, like a lack of it. 
when someone oh, yeah. like knows information and they just they're not telling you or they've assumed that you will know just anything like that like I've worked in many workplaces where communication was not their f- main aspect of the job yeah. and it just it all failed because of it like yeah. you've just got to communicate with one another and it's it's really not that hard communication is key is what we always yeah, say yeah we always on say court communication case, is key yes. on court case is quite so <laughs> yeah. like yeah okay communication mm. So, uh, what's your favourite holiday destination? Um, that we've been to, or that we want to go to. That you want to go to. It could be either. Okay. It could be either. Um, mine is mine is Canada. Uh, yeah. It's on my bucket list. I really want to go to Canada and see bears in the wild. Yep. Like I would. That's top of my list. What about you? Um, instantly, Japan came up. <sighs> Good I've always choice. wanted to visit Japan. Just mm. their culture really intrigues me. Yeah. That it's so different over there. It's beautiful over there. Mm. Um, also a bit friendlier than China. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man, yeah. Yep, very good. And both are fantastic choices, I think. So, <laughs> What's the best fashion advice either of you have ever gotten? Fa- fashion advice? Mm. Um, mine would probably be don't, don't give a shit. <laughs> which my friend um, Will, I think, told me that a few years ago because mm-hmm. there's so many people that they just they're trying to get on these trends and stuff like that. And my he said to me, just wear what you like to wear and what shows like your personality. And nowadays, I really love Hawaiian shirts. Okay, like most of my wardrobe is colourful shirts that I wear. He's not joking. And um, <laughs> no, and um, and. Sweet Tea, when she first started getting together with me, she didn't like it at the start. Okay. But then when I started, when she st- started to get it, and I was like, well, I'm just wearing what matches my personality and what and I, I like to wear. Hawaiian and now buying Hawaiian And now T's dad bought me a Hawaiian shirt the other day. <laughs> and, um, and also T-, T as well has started to wear a bit more stuff that just shows your personality more than yeah. what you think other people would See, like. I think my yeah, I think my um my advice would be from you. Like you just say to me, like just wear what you're comfortable wearing. Mm. Like don't follow trends. Like just if you're com- like even like comfort wise or even just generally like mentally, mm. what you're comfortable wearing. That's so important. Yeah. If you're comfortable in your own skin and if you're comfortable in what you're wearing, it doesn't matter what then think, you really. will come off as a more approachable like yeah. person mm. yeah um so i would rather like turn up to some sort of like smart event in a hawaiian shirt and but i'm comfortable and i know that like you know i feel good and i feel yeah. like me yep. than you know i remember i didn't used to wear as much color as i did before you and i remember mm. you said don't be scared of color and yeah. now i love colorful clothes <laughs> great yeah. that's fantastic yeah. i'll say you're good for each other <laughs> <laughs> um favorite band oh easy weezer yeah you're okay easy. Oh, i um... love i'm seeing them on june 24th i'm seeing that hella mega tour that they're okay. doing with green day and fallout boy okay. i'm so excited very good i don't think i listen to like bands no your favorite is post malone yeah my favorite artist, artist is post malone mm. okay yep um, post malone yeah cool. but as yeah. Not a band I can think of. No, that's all right. Not a problem. That's that's perfect. Okay. Now, this one's probably more for James than it is Tegan, but this (laughs) also emanates from a uh, one of the episodes that I listened to. Your Mm favourite James Bond actor? Oh, Christ. Um, I do. I think he's an unpopular opinion, but I do really like Piers Brosnan. Really? A few of his films. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do. do. But uh, I think. It's an overused answer, but Daniel Craig was good. He was good. Oh, Daniel, yeah. yeah, Daniel Craig was good. He's not my favourite. I, I actually like Sean Connery. but <laughs> so. Yeah, Sean, Sean, Con- Sean Connery is a great one. I do like some of the older films. Uh, that I, I, some of the older ones, I prefer like the villains' like performances than yes. I do the Bonds as much. Okay. Because some of the villains are so like, interesting and iconic. Yes. But, um, yeah, I do, yeah, I think Daniel Craig probably, if I had to think about it. He is really he, good. He will, yeah, yeah, he is really good. All right. Mm. If you could go to dinner with three people from history, this is a pretty uh, usual sort of a question that people get <laughs> asked, but uh, oh. I'm interested to find out who you would pick. Who, If you could go to dinner with three people from history, who would it be? Oh from history? Yes. Um, um, okay. I'll have to have a quick thing, but I think I've got, I think I've got my three. I think, well, I know one absolutely would be Johnny Cash. Um, really? 
I would kill. Yeah, I love country music. Okay. My granddad wrote me on country music, and also I've seen that film about his life, yes. and I would just, uh, so I would just ask him so much okay. about, you know, his beliefs, like his life, what he did. So Johnny Cash would definitely be one. Um, that was your King Phoenix. He played Johnny. Cash, um, it was, was. Yeah, it was. It was Joaquin yeah. Phoenix, the guy yeah. that played Joker. Yeah, um, it's a really good film. I think. I would be interested in going. It's one of the like presidents from like the sixties or something like that. Someone like okay. Richard Nixon or John F. Kennedy. I think would be interested to see. Um, and I'm going to go with most of my mine have all been American. I think I've not pretended I'm British. <laughs> uh, another one would be any of the astronauts that were involved in the space race. Okay, yeah, because that that was another podcast episode I did where I did loads of research on it, okay. which was the, the the moon landings and this oh, and the space race. Answer. And um, yeah, the, learning, uh, talking to someone that was actually doing it yeah. would be really interesting. Um, you I got, don't know. You've not got anyone from history? No, no one's sticking out for me. Uh, well, JFK so. would be a great one because you could talk about the yeah. Cuban Missile Crisis and uh, everything yes, that happened there. Can. That'd be a great one. Yeah. So. And um, he was also the person that's, that said we're committed to putting someone on the moon. So mm. you could talk to him about that as well. Yeah, mm. definitely. No, no one taken? No, no one's jumping out at me. Um, I find it really hard to think of answers in the spot, don't I? You do, yeah. Um, you struggle with this a lot. I really do. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I should have actually sent them to you. No, really, no, no, so. no, it's honestly fine. Um, Winston I, Churchill? Michael Jackson came to mind just because I'd be interested in finding out. That would be good because you could find out whether his life and whether how was, it all happened, how, like his death all happened. Whether he was creepy or not. I don't think oh, he was. Yeah. But, but then there's people that say that he's still alive. Have you seen there that? Are, that I've, that, I've um, seen that conspiracy theory. theory. Yeah, Michael Jackson would be a good choice. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be definitely be, it'd be interesting. An interesting dinner. <laughs> oh, I know that it's three, but one more, Robin Williams. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Yes, that's a show. I'll pick him as well. Actually. Yeah. In fact, I would just invite only him. You can have three people. No, <laughs> yeah. I'll just have Robin Williams yeah. for dinner, please. No, well, yeah, well he could be enough people on his own anyway, so uh, <laughs> enough characters. Yeah. So. <laughs> do impressions of the other three. <laughs> exactly right. And uh, you would not stop laughing, I dare say. So, yeah, yeah he'd be, yeah, he'd be a fantastic yeah, dinner guest. All right. Uh, last one. What's something about yourselves that probably people wouldn't know to ask or wouldn't expect to know about you? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, something that people wouldn't know to ask about me. Mm, Maybe an interest or something like that that uh, is a little left of centre f- considering your personality or... Yeah, well, country music. Uh, there's, there's one actually. Yeah, that, well, that's that. You know what? That probably would be one of them. Yeah, because uh, there's not many people my age that, especially in the UK, mm. that are into country music. I think that's quite a interesting uh, aspect. I think, and uh, yeah, I think that's going to be my answer. I think. Do yeah. you have an unusual thing that you think people wouldn't know about you specifically? Do you think I do? She does TikTok dances. Okay. <laughs> I don't feel like it was part of the conversation, though. <laughs> no, but you, you, yeah. don't, you don't post any of them, do you? No. She but um, no. she likes to do a bit of TikTok dancing. Well, you have, you have to start posting them. Yeah. Ooh. You're quite good at them, to be fair, because you, you learn the moves really well. Good. Yeah. That's, I can't dance for shit. It, yeah, that's one. So, there you go. But, he has no rhythm. Yeah. That's something <laughs> But <laughs> that's, that's why your dances impress me, because I can't. Even begin to learn. But you don't even have the patience. No. Fair, <laughs> enough. fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. We'll go with that. After that, that I guess. That'll do. That's fine. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's finish off this list. Let's get to your number one. What is your yeah. movie coming in at number one? Yeah, it's more of a. It's a more recent one that came the out. Most recent, isn't it? Yeah, it's the most recent on this list, and it was nominated for a few Oscars. Uh, it's Don't Look Up. Mm-hmm. Which was a Netflix movie with like a huge like all star cast, um, amazing cast. Yeah, I think the reason that it's it left a lasting impression because not only was it was a film essentially about climate change, even though it was about a meteor hitting the Earth, um, but it really made me realize how much like the richer people and the corporations just don't care and they don't care about you because there's that there's this turning point in the film where 
they have like two options and they take like the riskier option mm. because it could earn them more money. Yeah. And it basically just costs the world basically them choosing yeah. to do that. And it's such a metaphor about how, and also in a way it's, it's like when there's a lot of people that work jobs and they work jobs for these big companies and they give up like time with their family and time with friends and stuff because, you know, they're work they're worshiping the company, you know, and it just, it made me realize that they don't have your best interests at heart. Yeah. And so while you should, you know, work for these places and you should have a stable job and things for the rest of your life, but you do need to prioritize what's important to you a hundred percent because they are, they're prioritizing what they want. Yeah, yep, definitely. Um, and it's just, it's a, yeah, I think it's an important message. And also Leon, Leonardo, oh my God, Leonardo DiCaprio's acting was. He's good in everything. everything yeah. But just. But his passion in that though. Towards the end of the movie when he's given that speech yeah. on live TV and he's just giving it his all. Ah, oh, I love him. Crazy. He's so good. My favourite Leo performance is um, in Django Unchained. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, he plays such a good villain because he's his personality in it is so, so likeable. Yeah. And he seems like he's puts on such a show, yet he's literally being one of the most despicable people ever. Yeah. And he just he plays it so, so well. Yeah, yeah, setting dogs on people, that's not exactly the greatest guy yeah. around. <laughs> oh, and he, do, and he does it with that Leo smile on yeah. his face. Yeah. He's literally setting dogs on people. Oh, such a good performance. I, I think they call that smile a shit eating green. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, green. Yeah, yeah, all right. Fantastic. Well, that's your 10. And, and by the way, did you know that Don't Look Up is actually also a Japanese horror movie? Oh, what? Of the same name? <laughs> of the same name. So, oh, wow. yeah. So, wow. Uh, it's funny. Uh, but uh, yeah. you might have to go watch that. Oh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, that was a, a, a great uh, 10. And uh, it was a really yeah. enjoyable uh, chat, uh, getting to know you guys yeah, a little bit better. Fun. I hope everyone has uh, benefited from uh, listening to you guys and will go out and listen to your show as well because I find it really entertaining and like I said I think the chemistry and the dynamic between you two is uh, really really entertaining and Tegan I hope even if you do have to do it by remote please uh, you know, <laughs> stay on the show uh, I know you're following yeah. your career but please stay on the yeah, show because no, it's, it's, uh, great guys this is your chance to uh, plug all your content and all the contact points that you've got go for it oh. We have got a website just dedicated to the podcast called courtcasepodcast.com. So you can find loads of stuff on there, all our episodes, blogs, things about us and our guests. Um, but we are on Spotify. We are on Apple Podcasts, all of the streamers. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Just search the Court Case Podcast. And um, our main social media is Instagram, which is at Court Case Podcast. Fairly easy to find us in all those places, just searching those three words. We're trying to get into TikTok a little bit more. Yes, yeah. Once which we, is the same. Mm, so, which will, yeah, which is the same court case podcast. So, we're going to start making more content on there. But, yeah, you can find us in all of those places. And um, you've been an amazing interview as yeah, well. Yeah, really good. We've, we've one of our favorite appearances in a while. Oh, we've thank really you guys. enjoyed the chat. That's yeah. very nice. Mm. Very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, that's great. I'd love to have you back on again sometime too. So obviously yeah. we'll, we'll keep in touch uh, through uh, Instagram and things like that and uh, the other uh, avenues that uh, you've got there. And uh, I'll be following your uh, careers with you oh. know, much interest. So yeah. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, guys, look, thank you very much again. It's been great. You have a, a really good day and I'll catch up with you uh, on the socials. Yeah, yeah. Keep us updated. We'll see you. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Thank Bye-bye. you. That's it, folks. Another episode down and the end to season two. I hope you have stuck with me this far and enjoyed the chat with James and Tegan and that you will pop on over and give their show a listen. Their recent shows with Flat Earth Dave were a lot of fun and Dave skirted with death by re- in- by inferring to James that dinosaurs didn't exist. As you heard, James has a particular affinity with Jurassic Park and the dinos. But great people and I hope to chat with them again in the future. If you would be so kind, please follow my show on your preferred platform, rate and review where you can, and if you think someone else might like my show, feel free to tell them about it. Also, feel free to take a look at my new website and if you would like to support the show, all the links are there and in the show notes for this episode. But for now, thanks for listening and I'll chat at you again 
next episode and next season. <laughs>